Hello. We've got something new here, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. So, I've been alluding to this a little bit, but... This is the beginning of a new series. This is going to be the RDL, the Revelation Stress League. Um, this is... Um, what a... So, this is a VGC 20... 20 draft league post crown tundra um since crown, crown tundra is going out pretty soon we could we could do this now let's uh let's preface this by uh with some things so on how the draft worked and everything like that so i can't see my mouse um so for the actual draft we got uh, we actually got a lot of pokemon like so a standard draft has 11 pokemon um but we got 13 picks which really makes this actually kind of an interesting team uh what interesting one because everyone has good pokemon um a lot of the tiers were kind of based on the uh the wbe uh kind of the uh the premier vgc event that was based on series five um and then we kind of had a look and kind of based on judgment on where we should put some of the uh some of the pokemon coming into sword and shield in uh we're coming into sword and shield from the crown tundra so yeah we kind of went based off of no no box art legendaries things like that um going off of what we expect the vgc format to be like um so some things might be a little bit wrong tiered like just because things will drop off, things will move up. We couldn't be sure. And honestly, I didn't want to have to go through and do another tier list. So, we kind of just went off this and we kind of decided on what we thought would be best. So, with how things worked, we had the following. So, we had to pick um, a... So, we got a G-Max Pokemon, two tier 1s, two tier 2s, two tier 3s, two tier 4s, and four free picks. Um... I believe in the U in the WBE, you only got um, one tier one, one tier two, or maybe it was one tier one, one tier four. I can't quite remember. Um, it, w it was something like that. Uh, basically, we upped it a little bit on Pokemon. Mm, not sure why we upped it so to so many. Um, to be completely honest, I know some people were saying, oh yeah, we've only got one tier one. We're probably not going to get that many strong Pokemon as a result. Like, it's only one tier one and the rest are free picks. But with how the point system worked, um, you're going to see how silly things got. So, with 13 picks, everyone's team's good. Everyone's team is at least good. So, uh, with a G Max, and like, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of good teams. And there's only eight teams in the league. Uh, some of the coaches will actually be familiar from DUBL as well. Um, a few of the coaches from the UBL, in fact, this, uh, league is actually organized by Kana, um, whose channel I will link in the description, because I believe they're actually going to do a lot of the content for this league, so, I guess it's a break off my back? <laughs> Thanks, Kana. Um, but yeah, so, my draft, obviously I'm repping the Everton Espions, because that is what I, what would I rep, I am. I am the coach of the Everton Espions, and we have our... Our draft. So, I was fourth in draft. Um, as per usual, I am always sleep when the draft actually starts. Um, and I did, I kind of had an idea on what I wanted to draft. Um, whether that would actually work, I wouldn't know. So, also, there's one, one other uh, speculation. Uh, a couple bands. Um, again, I wasn't there for the bands, so I couldn't actually put my piece in. But it's what people wanted, so we went with this. Um, both the... Both, ta uh, both of the Tapus and the Ultra Beasts are not allowed to be Dynamaxed. Uh, this is a big deal because some of them Dynamaxed are very, very strong. Things like Kartana, Celesteel, or Tapu Koko come to mind. Um, some of those are extremely powerful. And honestly, even in a draft format, those might be too powerful. Um, also, we don't generally know what they'll be like with Max. So those were kind of banned. Um... This is important because I feel like there was a little bit of a sneak under the radar. And how I got this first pick on round four. 
Oh, so it's pick four of the entire draft. I have no idea. Can, can you guess? Come on. It's If it's not obvious, they banned Tapu Baxing. They, they banned Ultra Beast drafting. <laughs> but they didn't ban <laughs> Landorus Farian for Maxing. <laughs> So I got Landorus Firion. <laughs> um, I'm using the Pokemon League draft to just kind of show um, the team. But yeah, if it doesn't let me put in all 13 Pokemon, I can understand. Landorus Firion. <laughs> Easily <laughs> going to be the most powerful Pokemon in VGC 2020 post Crown Trundra, in my personal opinion. I don't care about Coco, it loses to Landorus. I don't care about what people are saying, oh, just run Ice Moves, or just run Milotic, or whatever. Landorus is going to be the most centralizing Pokemon in the metagame, in my personal opinion, because it's so good as a max target. Dynamaxing Landorus Furion is one of the most powerful things you can possibly do. Um, We know... Oh, it's, it's, it's not showing me anything, because I have it on Battle Stadium doubles. Whatever, doubles OU, sure. We'll we'll go with that. Does it still set to level 50? Let's hope it does. It does not, whatever. Um, wish there was a format that I could just look at. Um, that had the Crown Tundra stuff. Um, but whatever, I guess we'll go with doubles OU, because we can actually see the Pokemon. Um, so yeah, uh, Landorus Furion. Uh, why is it so good? Um, well, I believe it's going to get high horsepower. If it doesn't, whatever. It's still got Earthquake. It gets Superpower as a max move. Uh, it can set its own sand with Rock Slide as a max move. It can use Fly as a max move to raise speed. It can max Bug. It can max Dark, which are off of good moves. With Knock Off and uh, U-Turn. Oh, I don't know if it's Knock Off, actually. I don't know if Knock Off is a, is a move that's gonna, it's going to get. But it can also run Sword Stance. It can run so many good offensive I, offensive ways. It can be run defensively. It's such an insane Pokemon. Especially in a Dynamax format, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, this is going to be probably one of the main carries of the of the whole team. Al almost no questions asked. Uh, it was my first pick for a reason. My original first pick... Uh, was actually going to be Tornadus uh, Incarnate. I thought Tornadus Incarnate, if Landorus Varian went, I thought Tornadus Incarnate would be a good pick because, you know, Defiant plus... T Defiant is going to get Defiant with the uh, with the, 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 the ability patch. So I thought that, or you could run it as Prankster's Tailwind, you can run it offensive, it'd be a good Maxmon. That could be really good. So I thought about that, but when I saw Landorus Varian was still there, I was like, that's my tier one. That's one of my tier ones, hands down. No questions asked. So, yeah. We went with Landorus Fury. The next Pokemon that we went with was one I think snuck under the radar. And I don't think we realized how good it was. Um, and now that I realize how good it is, I think it's kind of a little bit insane as a tier 2. That's right, just as a tier 2. <laughs> and that is Tapu Bulu. All the other Tapus went to tier 1, but Tapu Bulu escaped into tier 2. And I think this might have been a bad call. <laughs> Um, so, I knew priority, I knew gra it got Grassy Glide, that was, a, that was a given, I knew it was gonna get Grassy Glide, I didn't realize it was gonna get Play Rough and Close Combat, however, that was snuck under my radar, um, so the fact that it does get those, is kind of nutty, Bulu's an insanely good Pokemon, like, it's super, super good, I don't know why it's saying illegal, whatever, probably because it's annoying. I, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe they're banned in double OU. I don't know. But this is an insane Pokemon. The fact that it's going to get play rough and close combat is going to make this Pokemon really, really good. Even not maxed. The fact that this can't max doesn't matter. This thing will still hit like a truck with Grassy Glide and Wood Hammer and close combat and play rough. Like, you just give it those four moves and this this is just better Rillaboom. This is better Rillaboom and Rillaboom is a tier one. <laughs> like, this thing is insane. <laughs> Like, how did, this get, how did this get away with this? So, but mainly because I didn't think it was going to be as good. Um, it was a, bit, a little bit less good than the other Tapus, but I really should have thought about this one more. This one was, this one, like, I don't know why no one actually commented on why this thing was only tier 2. Like, I, I, I let it slip, not intentionally. Um, 
but yeah, like, because I called out Tapu Finny being in tier 2, and I was like, eh, should that be really be in tier 2? And people were like, yeah, you're right, probably still tier 1. And I just left Bulu there, and no one else questioned it. And I was like, and then I thought about it more, and then someone told me it got play rough in close combat. I was like, yeah, this is busted as a tier 2. So this was my second pick. Um, I was like, yeah, this team's already insane. The fact that I've already got these two is really, really good. I was hoping to get Cartana as well, but Cartana was picked just before I got Bulu. So I was like, yeah, there's no way I get Cartana Bulu. Like, I don't care if either of them can't max. Like, Cartana Bulu with double grassy glide would have been the nuttiest thing on the planet. So. <laughs> so round three comes around and I'm like, okay, well, I've already got two really good physical attackers. What do I want? And I was really thinking about what I could have had here. Um, but I was like, there's a lot of good Pokemon still in tier 1. I should probably make sure I get one of them. And I figured what's a better thing to do than get one of the best support mons. Um, and we're not talking about Incineroar for once. We're actually talking about Cresselia. So Cresselia's coming back. Um, and this is an incredible support Pokemon. It's been a good support Pokemon for so many, so many years. Heck, I even max it, but, like, I'm sorry. You give this thing, like, Ally Switch and Trick Room and Icy Wind and Helping Hand and Size Shock. And it, it gets so many good moves. It's a really bulky Pokemon. Like, very few things can realistically take this out in one hit. Like, when I was EVing to look at, uh, to look at Cress... Uh, for when I had to go against it in the UBL. Um, I needed, like, max special attack. Uh, with Moongite, with, with, with Lunala's Lunali Z-move to kill a max HP, max Bedef Cress. That's how good it is. It's super, super bulk. It's the definition of bulk, and it's such a good support Pokemon. That I was like, yeah, of course I want Cress. Like, if I'm gonna have support in, like, E-Trick Room Center, like, one of... One of the best Trick Room setters, excuse me. Like, give me Cress every day of the week. It's so, so good. Um, so, I think, actually, like, overall with my draft, I think one of the downsides is that it's kind of got some of the sp same tiers, like 75, 85, 91. Like, it's got some similar speed tiers, but yeah. I I think that Cress, like, yeah. Cress is going to be really good. Um, I suppose I should also kind of mention my draft analogy. I didn't want to go for a lot of synergistic picks. I didn't want to make modes of my team. If anything, I kind of went for... If if those are familiar with the WB, um, I went with a strat that was very similar to um, Cybertron's, uh, which was kind of basically pick good Pokemon that can work together, but don't pick modes of a team. So, like, the most I'll do is I'll have a fast mode and a slow mode, and that's about it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna intentionally try and make modes of the, modes for a team. I just want good, good Pokemon that can work well together in a team, and that can create a, di create a way to pl play. Um, not having to lock myself into certain modes when I don't know what modes will work well together in certain teams and things like that, because I'm not the best drafter in the world. So that's why the team is going to be how it is. Kind of just a lot of generally really good Pokemon. Um, also, I should probably put it on here. So, Cress. Um, so. Pick four. I've got the uh, draft order up, like, on another tab. So, that's why I'm looking at it. So, pick four. Um, right. So, this pick was actually going to be my third pick. But I thought about it and I thought, eh, I can get away with not picking this uh, now I'll pick it later, uh, and if I don't get it, I, there's a decent backup that I can grab instead. For some reason, this didn't go, so I used some of my free points because Chris was a tier one. Uh, I used some of my free points for another tier one. What's that tier one? You remember how I was talking about Incineroar? <laughs> yeah, we got Incineroar again. <laughs> it's so good. In, it's so good in VGC. And people were saying, how did we let it, let him get away with Incineroar again? Uh, because a lot of people in the UBL are, like, in this league as well. And I was like, it's round four, guys. If you wanted Incineroar, you should have grabbed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Um, so, you guys know how good Incineroar is. It's, like, it's, it's been one of my main Pokemon in the UBL this season. And you can see why. Like, it's moved poor for... Four 
uh, doubles is nutty. Um, its bulk is nutty. It's it's just so good. And in th in this generation, it gets friggin' parting shot and burning jealousy and lash out. Um, granted, Intimidate is a little bit worse this generation. And it didn't dominate as bad as it did in 2019, but in 2020, in Series 5, it was, uh, I believe it was third in usage, second only to Rillaboom Togekiss. So it's still an incredible Pokemon. Let's just put Intimidate on there, let's be realistic. Um, it also gets close combat just gen, actually, which is uh, really nice, cause you, especially because you can't low kick a. Uh, a maximum so that's really nice so yeah it's just it's a great offensive and defensive piece grabbing intimidate this early is really nice i now have double intimidate in my first four picks which that sounds familiar doesn't it um yeah like the, the reason why i was saying i could have it i i didn't want to pick it as my third pick i could pick it as my fourth was if incineral went i was happy to pick up arcanine instead um i quite like arcanine i've always liked arcanine but incineral is generally the better option. It also gives me a dark type. Um, I do want to make sure I get as many types as possible. And Incineroar just gives me a really nice dark type. So, as well as a fire type. It's just so good. We've seen how good it is when I've used it in the in the UBL. And it's just going to return and be disgusting again. Fake out, parting shot. Great coverage. Great uh, supporting moves as well. Well, like taunt. It's just so good. <laughs> So, fully expect me to be bringing Incineroar a lot because I'm Willow, and yeah, it's just, it's just good. It's just good. So, pick five. Um, we've, we had four tier one, or three tier one picks already in a tier two. I wasn't sure what I wanted to go with next. Um, because I did need a G-Max, and then, you know, a couple of good, couple of really good G-Maxes went already. Um, by this point, um... So what? What G-Max has gone by this point? G-Max Zard is gone. G-Max Cinderace is gone. G-Max Blastoise is gone. Those were the only G-Maxes that went. So there were still some good G-Maxes around. Obviously, Rillaboom would have been nice, but I kind of have Bulu, so eh, I don't really want Rillaboom. Um, so I kind of looked at the rest of the G-Maxes, and I was like, if I've got to have a G-Max, I, would, I wouldn't mind it being a Pokemon that doesn't have to max, ideally. But also, like, if the Pokemon's going to be just good enough then like why not and well that's kind of what i went with so i well i went with, originally that was the plan anyway but then i saw that there was still one gmax pokemon that doesn't that prefers to max but can definitely live without it um and that's lapras we got lapras gmax um this adds you know like this team needs more bulk this this makes the team so much bulkier this means the team can go more offensive than it needs than it might otherwise need to because G Max Lapras exists. Offensive G Max Lapras is a real threat as well as like just having defense as well. Like G Max Resonance is up there for one of the best G Max moves. Like no joke, up there with probably things like G Max Smite, um, and the uh, and things like Wildfire and Cat uh, Cannonade and uh, Vine Lash. And Vocalift, like the 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 chip damage ones, I'd say G uh, G Max Resonance is one of the best G Max moves. Uh, gives me a nice bulky water type. Um, yeah, just it, Lapras is going to be amazing. Um, I would argue it's one of the best G Maxes. Um, it's had a lot of success in Series Six. Had a lot of success basically before Rillaboom came out. Um, so yeah, like before Rillaboom, before Rillaboom got Grassy Surge and Grassy Glide, like it had a lot of success. It was basically just Rillaboom shut it down, and that's why I didn't see a lot of play in Series Five. But with me having Bulu, and there's only, I think there's only one person that actually has Rillaboom. Uh, G Max Lapras is going to be fine. So G it's a great Pokemon. Gets a good, a good amount of support moves. Uh, Life Juice really good. Obviously, it gets Freeze Dry and Hydro Pump for good offense as well as Thunder. It's a great, great max target, and it doesn't need to max. It would ideally max, obviously, because Resonance is amazing, and Lapras itself isn't the best Pokemon. But Lapras is so good. G Max Lapras is really, really good. So that's why we've gone with that. Um, and I wanted to make sure I at least had a good G Max, and Lapras is a really good one. So pick six. Um, I wanted to make sure I got another good tier one. Um. And I also remembered one of the things that I wanted on the team, and then realized I didn't really have it yet. And that was Tailwind. And I was like, well, I kind of need Tailwind. 
Um, I've already got a grass type, so I don't really want Whimsicott. I think Talonflame had already gone by this point, and I thought about it. I was like, wait, what about my original first pick? And uh, that hadn't gone yet, so we've got Tornadus Incarnate as well. Um, not uh, not Farian, actually. Uh, we want to Tornadus Incarnate because of both Defiant and Prankster, which it is going to get both of in the DLC. And I think that makes Tornadus, especially in Draft, very, very versatile. If you need Prankster Tailwind, you can get the Prankster Tailwind and you can make it a support boy. If you can just get away with it not needing Prankster Tailwind, just be faster than whatever they have and have Defiant or just make it an offensive threat that also has Tailwind, you can really make this thing into a threat. Uh, Tornadoes get some incredibly good max moves as well. It's gonna get... A, it's gonna have a fighting move. If... if if Landorus is getting superpower, Tornadus is getting superpower. That's the be-all end-all. So it can max, and it can also use max fly. So it actually has stab max airstream, 130 base power. Um, and it's going to be similar in how, like, in maxing. It's not got the best of moves to max with. It's more, it's better as special as hacker for maxing, really. But because of, um... Um, but because just like, you can, like, it just, it doesn't need to max and probably won't max a lot of the time, but its stats are really good. You can make it defensive, you can make it offensive, you can do a lot with Tornadus, and I think Tornadus is going to be a low-key pick. Low-key Pokemon that I don't think people are going to be ready for. This Pokemon is going to be insane to the membrane. Um, I'm very much looking forward to using Tornadus. Um... So that's all four of my tier ones that I can grab. That's right, four tier ones. I don't know why people were complaining about you needing more tier ones. Because the draft, because the free picks mean that, so you got 400 points for free picks, which means, and it's just like, okay, yeah, standard. How much do each of the tiers cost? Because there, there was four tiers. Tier ones only cost 150. So you could grab two tier ones and a tier two, which was 100 points. And then grab a tier 4, because they didn't cost anything. So you could grab two tier 1s and a tier 2. Um, and just use, and just order like two tier 1s and two tier 3s, and just go with those. Like, it was fine. So I was just like, cool, I'm just going to grab four tier 1s and make my team really top heavy. And granted, that doesn't mean my low tier picks aren't any slouch as well. But we'll get to those at some point. Um, moving on to round 7. Um... We're actually going to be going to, I believe, tier 2, I believe this was. This is a tier 2 pick. Um, I should probably know. Yeah, so this was another tier 2 pick. Um, which kind of makes sense looking at my speeds. It's kind of like a lot of middling to higher speeds, especially with Tornadoes. It's going to really help with that. But it also, I did Craft Crest and I kind of needed a Trick Room Pokemon. And I'll be honest, one of the best ones that I knew of that was going to be there... Escavalier. I really like Escavalier. Um, for a ma for a Trick Room Pokemon, it also makes me have a Steel type, which is really nice. I just really like Escavalier. Um, again, a bit inspired by the WBE. I really like Escavalier now. Uh, I have a lot of respect for it as a potential Maxmon. Uh, not even as a Maxmon, it can really work that, uh outside of it as well. Um, but maxing it really gives it the bulk to make it so it can really sweep in Trick Room. Um. Crest Cavalier is going to be a combo that I'm going to just... I'm going to... I'm going to name that now. I came up with that on the spot. Crest Cavalier. Or Crest Cav. It's going to be a real... Real thing. Um, and I expect... This is this is going to be, like, the core of my Trick Room node. Um, like, the, the main Pokemon I'm going to focus on for Trick Room with Crest. Um, it's going to be great support for Crest. And, yeah. It's... It, it's good. It's a really, really low speed. Stack attack is really the only lower speed, and I don't even know if anyone drafted stack attacker. Um, and it was a tier one, so I couldn't really go for it. I could have if I didn't go for Tornadus, but I also wanted priority tier one, so can you blame me? So yeah, we've got a nice slow mode now, but we're building out a bit more of a slow mode. Um, and that's only just over halfway into the draft. This was another tier two pick, so theoretically I could either have one more tier one, uh, sorry, one more tier two, and another tier. Three. Or, and a tier 4 or two tier 3s so as well as i got to pick up all my tier 3s and all my tier 4s <laughs> so yeah 
I definitely focused on my top end of the draft first because I wanted to make sure my top end was good. So, uh, going into pick eight, um, I believe this was. Yeah. Okay. So this one, this one made sense. Um, I was really torn on what to grab for this next pick, and I ended up going with something I felt like the team needed, and that was a. Uh, We've got Crest as a great support Pokemon. Your, um, Incineroar is a great support Pokemon. Tornadoes can be, but it also can be offensive. Same with Landorus. But another nice support Pokemon would be nice. And I also realized I had no redirection. So, in Tier 2, we grabbed Togetic. Um, Again, WB inspired. This thing takes hits like a champ um, with an Eviolite. I guess a lot of really nice support moves. Follow me, Helping Hand, Yawn. I don't think I need to say much else. Togetic's a really, really good Pokemon. Um, it's a super, super bulky Pokemon that's going to be a great redirector. Uh, Life Dew as well is another good support move. Um, so yeah, I don't think there needs to be much more said about Togetic. It's a super bulky fairy type. Um, the only downside is now I have three flying types. So, but I can probably circumvent that. With the, the thing about like having three flying types, it looks really sus. But like, there's also 13 Pokemon in the draft in, in each of our teams. So, like, having three flying types and making it so I can pick which ones I want is quite nice. So. But, yeah. So, Togetic, going to be my main redirector. Really bulky support Pokemon. And I can, as a result, it's going to be a little bit hard for me, people to predict what kind of support I want to go with. Because I already have so many good support options. It's a question of what am I trying to use? What, what do people have to fear? And what do people... What's going to be something I want to be doing? And how can people best prep for it? Prepping for teams in this league is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Because there's so many Pokemon and a lot of them are very, very good. Especially like my team. I, I'm very, very happy with my team. Pick 9 was actually an interesting one. So there's actually a lot of history on this one. Um, I got sniped. Um... I just got sniped actually a couple times actually, now that I think about it. But like, this was the big one. I got sniped, and I talked to the guy, uh, and I was like, listen, you, you, you keep, I, like, I knew what he was going to be drafting, because like, he was making a kind of obvious pattern, aka he was just basically copying one of the people in the WBE. And I was like, I know what you want is your next pick. And I was going before, and he was like, don't do it. And I, D I DM'd it, him, and he was like, oh no, please don't actually take it. I was like, alright, I'll strike you a deal. The Pokemon that you sniped from me, you can pick any other tier 3, I'll grab it for you, and then once the draft is over, we can trade. <laughs> and he was like, sure. And I, 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 we kind of talked about it, and I was like, this Pokemon's actually probably better for you um, than what you grabbed. And he was like, yeah, actually, I kind of need this more. Um, and it makes way more sense on my team. So... Um, Pokemon I ended up grabbing for the draft was Vikavolt. I ended up grabbing Vikavolt for someone. Um, however, uh, the Pokemon that I was trading it for, and the trade has gone through at this point, is Jolteon. <laughs> um, I went. I wanted Jolteon because I needed something super fast. I needed something that was like didn't need speed control to be fast, and that the Jolteon speed was needed. Um, so, that's why Jolteon is here. It's also actually a good max target. Again, WB inspired because, you know, I've kind of been watching the whole thing. Um, Jolteon's a great max target. It's not as good, probably not as good now, but, like, I'm still, like, Jolteon still hits really hard. And I did need a good special attacker because, like, other than, like, Lapras and special Tornadus and Cress, it's, I don't have a lot of great special attackers. I think that is one of the weaknesses of the team. Um... But I think this kind of made up for it a little bit. A lot of my lower tier mods kind of tried to patch a lot of the holes in the team. Um, and I think this does, act does actually do that. Also gives me a nice electric type. So a lot of my types are covered. Um, I think I cover most types. The only ones I can't think that I covered was like Rock. I think Rock's the only type. And that's just generally because I don't like a lot of Rock types. That's just me personally. There's not very many Rock types I can genuinely say I like. So... Um, but yeah, Jolteon gives me some speed. It also has some really nice support moves in, uh, screen. At least light screen, I think it might get reflect as well. Also gets Yawn. 
Uh, Thunder Wave. It gives a lot of nice support moves as well as being a great offensive threat. Um, so, pick 10. Right, we're going to pick 10. This is a long one, guys. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so we grabbed the Vicar Vault and now that trade has gone through, which is why I'm talking about it. Um, the trade happened like almost immediately afterwards. After the uh, thingy. So, pick 10. Um... I wanted to actually grab a good tier 4. Because um, I, I wasn't sure what my other tier 3 was going to be yet. But I want, I knew, that, like, since I grabbed such top-end heavy team, I knew I needed to get make the most out of my tier 4s if I was going to actually make sure I didn't have to rely on, like, the top 8 of my team being the 4 tier 1, the 3 tier 2s, and the G-Max Lapras. I wanted to make sure my tier, my lower tiers could actually make some use. And in my opinion, this was one of the best that was available. Um, I don't think many tier 4s have gone by this point. But for my team, I think this was one of the best available. Thwacky was available, but not really fitting for my team. Kangaskhan was available, but not really fitting for my team either. However, I think one Pokemon that was, that I also quite like, is Normal Weezing. I also have Normal Weezing in the GSC as well. However, um, it does not just get Levitate. It does Normal Weezing does still get Neutralizing Gas. So, um, having a tier 4 mon that can just, like, turn off abilities and also be a decently defensive threat, a def decently good defensive piece, um, is actually quite nice. Um, has decent coverage, it can taunt things, um, like, it's pretty solid, like, regular Weezing is definitely nothing, is, uh, there's nothing to scoff at, like, for sure, because, like, like I say, neutralizing gas is not bad, um, it gets decent coverage, it gets memento, um, like, it's, it's pretty solid. For a tier 4, like, this was probably one of the best, if not the best, I could realistically grab. It's gonna be nice as, if I deal, if I want to, you know, deal with physical attackers even more than I already have. But yeah, like, Weezing can definitely do a lot of work here with neutralizing gas, and just being quite defensive in general. So, I do like Weezing as a Pokemon. So, I am just glad to have it. So, it also nicely adds a poison type. So, more fair resist is, is never a bad thing. Pick 12. I think surprised a lot of people, and even myself, when I went for this. Um, I just pick 10. I'll pick 11 is this. Okay, so pick 11. Never mind. Pick 11, I think also it's just surprised people. Never mind. Um, pick 11 was the following so i wanted to go back to tier 3 and i actually needed a dragon type um this team does not feature a dragon currently um and i was looking in tier 3 originally i was uh for context as well i was potentially going to pick up um trigalogy uh, over a scavalier but i kind of opted against it and instead i guess i kind of got a little bit of a worse trigalogy we're still not a bad Pokemon by any means. Uh, and that is Drampa. So Drampa's actually got re three really nice abilities in my opinion. Um, like Cloud9 is really nice. Um, Berserk is quite nice. Um, and Sapsipper is quite nice. Like all three abilities have use. Um, it's also another really nice Trick Room mod. Because 36 speed is really slow. Like it's certainly not like... Like, when you kind of say you want a slow Pokemon for Trick Room, you usually kind of want to go base 30 speed-ish, because that's where Amoongus is. But also, it's, it's fine against Amoongus because Sap Sipper, so it's, it's, it can deal with it. Um, and it gets a lot of really nice coverage. Like, it gets, it gets Fire, it gets Ice, it gets Electric, it gets Hyper Voice for just not being a Maxmon. Um, obviously, Dragon Coverage, Hurricane for flying, like... It's a really solid Pokemon. I quite like Drampa. Um, and I think it could do some work here as a, def as a as a secondary trick room sweeper. I think it's helping hand too. So yeah, maybe even a maybe in support Drampa. So who knows? Boulders, interesting. Um, but yeah, so like Drampa is definitely a nice Pokemon. I I think it's definitely not the best trick room sweeper, but I think it can definitely do some work. I wouldn't rule out Drampa from being a good like a, a Pokemon that could bring in and definitely win a game with. Just because, like, it can certainly tear through some teams. So, um, so that's pick eleven. Pick pick twelve. Uh, this one, I think, yeah, this one was a surprise pick, even for myself. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone draft this thing ever. 
<laughs> and that is Fro. So Fro's an interesting Pokemon. It's a tier 4 pick. Dramp was my last tier 3, so I only have tier 4s to pick left. It's got three good abilities. Morbreak is pretty solid. Guts is really good. And in a focus, it's actually not bad because it means it can't be intimidated. It's also quite slow, so it can be a potential trick room one. Um, the thing about... Um, the thing about it is it's not a ma bad max mon either, especially if you like Guts Flame Orbit. Um, it gets decent coverage. I think it's a lot of the time just kind of like outclassed by fighting all the fighting types. Also gets coaching, which is really nice. Um, I think Fro could be actually pretty solid. Um, it gets a lot. It gets a decent amount of nice support moves as well. Um, I wanted a bulky fighting type that could actually be useful. Um, Buzzwall, I believe, is actually a tier 3, uh, which some people were like, oh yeah, Buzzwall would be really nice. Um, but I was like, I actually want a fighting type that can actually max. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take Throw. I think Throw could actually be pretty decent. Like, its stats are not bad. Um, like, 120 HP, 100 attack, 85 in both defenses, 45 speed to, like, low, but you can make that work in Trick Room. So, yeah, I think Throw could actually make some, make some waves. Not sure if it's going to be a, a, a premier, uh, member of the team. But I think it could definitely be something that people, if if people aren't prepared for for a throw sweep, which I never thought I'd say in my life, um, yeah, I I I say don't sleep on the throw, don't sleep on the throw. And the last Pokemon, I'm not gonna lie, the last Pokemon was kind of a meme pick. Um, I didn't know what I wanted for my last pick. Um, like I already had like basically everything I wanted. And honestly, the last two was basically just a pick between one not fully evolved ghost to another not fully evolved ghost. Um, and I think the only the only thing that's really selling me on one of them was I can actually weakness policy one of my Pokemon and actually use it as a weakness policy mon next to this. Um, and that was the only thing that could that sold me on it. I was like, sure, it's kind of funny. Let's just go with it. We've got Dracloak. Cloaky. Um, it's actually got some really nice support moves. It's also faster than Landorus, so the only reason why I drafted it is basically I can surf my own Landorus and weakness policy boost it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, but it may also have some other uses that I'm not quite sure on. Um, it gets some nice support moves in uh, Will-O-Wisp and Ally Switch. Um, breaking Swipe for more attack reduction. Um, it's not really that much worse in terms of bulk than Dra uh, Dragapult, but obviously, like, it's nowhere near as good as a max Pokemon. Um, obviously, it doesn't get Dragon Darts, because it's it's, 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 have you seen it? It's, it's, it's only got one. It is Dragon Dart. Um, I'm sorry, I really love just Dragon Dart. It's so funny. It's helping and too, actually. Um, it's Sucker Punch as well, which I don't think I can really stickly Sucker Punch one of my own Pokemon and Weakness Policy boost it. Let's look. Okay, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it can definitely Weakness Policy some stuff, and I think it can make use of a... Uh... I think it would be a decent support Pokemon. I wouldn't expect a lot from it. I guess I wouldn't mind a Justified user, but, like, and that would make it better, but, like, I'm not going to complain. Like, I wasn't really looking much in the tier fours at that point like i couldn't really find a lot that i would have wanted and i would have even considered using on a team um so just cloak is here a bit of a meme pick but it's also just kind of like it can make use so like we can see in the speed tiers um we've got like a lot of the slow to middling pokemon like a lot of my speed tiers kind of slow to middling um but we've also got some quite fast pokemon in jolteon and uh Tornadus. we've got uh, we've got like, we, I think we only actually had the one Trick Room setter, but, like, if you're going to complain that your one Trick Room setter being Cress, I think, I think I've got bigger worries in the world. Um, and then we've got a nice fast move with uh, Tailwind on uh, Tornadus. I don't know if anything else on my team gets Tailwind, but, like, I'm fine with that. Like, nothing else realistically needs Tailwind. This is going to be the Tailwind machine. Um, we've, got the, we've got the Tailwind machine, we've got the Trick Room machine... We've got great support in Insane and Crest and Togetic, um, potentially even in Weezing and uh, Throw and Dracloki. Um, even Landorus can be a bulky support. Like, so there's a lot of options. There's very few Pokemon on this team 
that are set in stone in what they can do. And I think that's what makes them so good. Um, very, very few Pokemon on this team. You, you cannot... You cannot say, I'm going to expect these six Pokemon, and then say to me, okay, but what are each of them going to do exactly? And how are they going to be built? You cannot say that. There's not a lot of great synergy in the terms of, like, modes. But in terms of what these Pokemon allow the team to do, um, which is be very, very, very bulky and very offensive at the same time, as well as having great speed control and great utility... I think this team had covers a lot of great bases, and that is what I'm hoping that this team can accomplish. Um, again, I believe I covered every type with this. Oh, do I have a rock? Do I have a rock type? This thing? Oh, right. Th those are the cores, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think the only type I did miss was, uh, was rock. I think that was the only type I missed, because we, we got no uh, normal here, uh, fire here. Water here, grass here, electric here, ground here, flying here, um, bug, steel, uh, ice as well, psychic, ghost, dragon, poison, uh, fighting, uh, we've got steel, um, ghost, it's kind of why I wanted a ghost, just to make sure I had a ghost. Um, it was that or it was it, it was for, for the record it was this or lampant and I saw lampant special attack and I was like no <laughs> Lampant special attack compared to chandeliers is not that good um, But yeah, um I Think this seems pretty solid. Um, I don't know if they call it the best team in the overall draft But I'm at least very very happy with it. I think people are kind of Trying to say it's the best team in the draft. I would say it's definitely quite top heavy um, but when the top eight, top part, like, the tier ones and the tier twos make up eight of the 13 Pokemon, I don't think that's a bad thing. And, like, I'd say even the tier threes can be realistically used. Like, Drampa Jolteon could easily come to games. Um, and even the tier fours aren't that bad. I guess Dracloakie's not great, but it's honestly kind of a meme. But Fro and Weezing, I would say, are not that bad Pokemon. They could easily come in the right circumstances. Um... But yeah, the rest of the, like, the top eight are so good together. Like, they have, they are going to work well together. Um, just in general. There was a potential to pick up another grass type to grassy glide with, but I wasn't really sure. Um, other things would be maybe more support for your cloak. Uh, wouldn't have been bad. Um, and really, that's about it, really. Like, something else to abuse the terrain, or something to, or something else to make use of your cloak. I think those would be the main weaknesses of the team, other than, like, weakness policy and Galando T. Like, that's it. Like, those I think would be the considered the flaws, other than that, maybe, like, I've got too many, like, low to middle east speed Pokemon, but when I, when they can work both in Trick Room and in Tailwind, I think that works quite well. It's going to be very, very difficult for people to kind of realise... Or to to think on what uh what they want to bring against my team um because it's it's so versatile in what it can do so uh that is going to be the end of this um do look forward to the RDL um I'm very much looking forward to it it's gonna be nice uh to try and play some VG 2020 um saying I've been playing what Jenny Jenny Nat decks and VGC 2019 in draft. So actually playing a VGC 2020 draft league uh, is going to be a lot of fun. Um, especially pros can Again, I think some of the things were missed on, on like how good they were. Like Tabu Bulo, I think was vastly underrated. And I think we kind of got a steal on that one. Um, but I think the rest of the tiers, I think we got mostly right. Um, maybe there were a couple we kind of missed. Um... Like, we put Buzzwall in tier 3, but that was because he couldn't max. And I think maxing Buzzwall would actually make it one hell of a lot better. Um, uh, and, like, Guzzlord was, like, tier 4. And I'm not sure if that was right, but I've never seen Guzzlord be good. And I don't even think with Dynamax it can be good. I would I would be confident in saying that Togetic could one-shot it. Actually, Togetic's got 80 special attack. No, mind. I actually, I, yeah, they absolutely would. I would say even, like... Crest, Crest Moonblast could probably one-shot a Guzzlord in Dynamax. 
Like, that's how confident I am that, like, Guzzlord isn't good. So. Yeah. But yeah, I think that it does. I think that does it. Um, week one, I believe, has technically begun. Um, but I need to figure things out on uh, when we're playing. And also, like, the doc hasn't updated with the trades because uh, Kana has been quite busy in with uh, with schoolwork and things like that. So, yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, that, that about does it. So um, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. So take it easy, everyone.